month, the Hill Dickinson shipping team released their case digest. This provides subscribers with a useful and concise case summaries of legal decisions in the shipping industry. In November's edition, we provided three case summaries, and I'm going to discuss one of those for you today. This is the case of Warner and Scarpa Flow Charters, which was a Supreme Court decision. In this case, Mr. Warner chartered a vessel from Scarpa Flow Charters. Unfortunately and sadly, whilst he was on the vessel, Mr. Warner passed away. Mrs. Warner brought two claims, one in her own name and one on behalf of their young son. At the time of the incident, the applicable liability regime was the Convention in regards to Carriage of Passengers and Luggage by Sea, 1974, known as the Athens Convention. Under Article 16 of the Athens Convention, a claimant has two years to bring their claim unless the law of the court seized has a postponement provision, in which case the two years is extended to three years. Now the law of the court seized in this case was Scots law, and under Scots law there is the Prescription and Limitation Act 1973. In this act, time limits for child claims are extended and do not run until the child reaches 18 years of age. Now, Mrs. Warner's claim was time barred as it was brought after the two years. However, this claim involves the claim of her son and the issue was whether Scots law applied and could be brought into the Athens Convention so that the son's claim could be postponed to the full three years. If that is the case, then the son's claim would have been brought in time and it would not have been time barred. In the lower courts, Mrs. Warner was successful with her claim on behalf of the son. However, she was not successful with her own claim. Obviously, Scarpa flow charters were not happy that her son's claim was found to be within the time limit because the postponement period applied. Therefore, Scarpa flow charters appealed the decision and they kept appealing the decision until it got to the Supreme Court. In the Supreme Court, Scarpa flow charters had two main contentions and both of those contentions related to the meaning of postponement and interruption. The first contention was that the natural meaning of those words was that it applied to a break in time as opposed to the time not beginning to run yet. The Supreme Court didn't like this. They held that the meaning was actually wide enough to interpret both of those interpretations. So they raised a second contention, which was under civil jurisdictions, the meaning applied to a break as opposed to a delay. The Supreme Court didn't like this idea either. The Supreme Court held that you couldn't apply a civil technical meaning to an international liability regime that applied to both civil and non-civil jurisdictions. And they went so far to say that in 1974, even in civil jurisdictions, the meaning wasn't consistent. On that basis, they held that it was a postponement that did fall within Scots law. And Scots law, being the court of the land seized, did apply in the Athens Convention. Therefore, Mrs. Warner's son's claim could be extended so that the time period was three years. As the claim was brought within the three years, it was allowed to proceed and Mrs. Warner's son's claim was successful and the appeal was dismissed. Three. Having rejected both the Scarpa Flows Charter's contentions, the Supreme Court held that Section 18 of the Prescription and Limitation Act 1973 did apply to this case and was a valid postponement under the Athens Convention. Therefore, Mrs. Warner's son's claim was bought within the time period as it was bought within the three years. Now as I said before this is a Scots law case however under English law as the law currently stands the two-year time period is mandatory however on the basis of this case which was a Supreme Court case we wait to see how this will play out. We expect to see lots of claimant solicitors arguing that this court should apply in England but we wait to see.